Uh, tomorrow, I'll be holding my office hours from 11 to 12.30 uh, on the same EC5759 link. So uh, if you have any questions regarding any of the stuff we have studied so far, please do come to my office hours tomorrow. And, uh, um, and this would be the office hours prior to midterm. Uh, there are, there's no class on Friday, so, uh, but there will be office hours on Friday. So that office hours will be dedicated to assignment problem and not necessarily the midterm problem. So if you have any questions on the midterms uh, exam, you have to ask me tomorrow. Um, okay, so let's get started with uh, the continuation of our discussion about augmented Lagrangian method from the last class. So we wanted to minimize a function over the space of real number or over a Euclidean space subject to HX equal to zero constraint. And one of the ways that we identified to solve this problem was to use what is known as augmented Lagrangian method. So we define the augmented Lagrangian LC as a function F plus C over two HX squared plus Lambda transpose HX. And what this term C over two HX squared does is it makes the function LC strongly convex in X under certain condition. And then X star becomes a local minimum of LC. Okay. And now what we are looking for, so LC at Lambda star. So of course we don't know what Lambda star is. So that's a open problem right now, but it turns out that optimal solution, well, uh, in order to compute the optimal solution of the original problem, I need to compute the optimal solution of this uh, augmented Lagrangian evaluated at lambda star. Now, of course, we don't know what lambda star is, so we discussed two ideas, but one of the essential ideas in augmented Lagrangian is, suppose I pick a sequence of lambda k that converges to lambda bar, and I pick a sequence of CK that escapes to infinity and CK is an increasing sequence. And if I define my XK as the argument of this augmented Lagrangian term at CK and Lambda K, this argument is over X and RN. If this sequence XK converges to a point, then X bar is a global minimum of the optimization problem that we started with, okay? And this was the pictorial description. So we start from some place in the, some point in the space uh, Rn. And then I run the augmented Lagrangian method. So this would be my X1, this is my X2 and so on. And eventually I'll converge to a point which is on this surface, Hx equal to zero surface. And it's the optimal point of the original problem. Today, the goal is to talk about method of multipliers. which basically builds on the augmented Lagrangian method that we just talked about. Okay, so here we know that CK needs to escape to infinity. So it's easy to construct such a sequence that goes to infinity and it's an increasing sequence, but we would like to have better control over this particular sequence. So how do we update Lambda K such that it converges to something and we also converse to X star, which is the optimal solution. So how do we get to, um, how do we get, uh, uh, how do we pick a better update scheme for Lambda K? Okay, so that's the problem we will be addressing today through the method of multipliers approach. This approach is based on a very cool result in my opinion, which is the following result. So I have a CK that goes to infinity. CK is an increasing sequence. CK is less than CK plus one. Um, we have XK, which is the argument um, X and RN, LCK X lambda K. Okay, and lambda k is some, some uh, sequence. Okay, so the statement of the theorem is if xk converges to x bar and the gradient of h at x bar is full rank, 
then two things happen. The first thing that happens is your lambda k plus ck hxk converges to some point. So, so this some point, so converges to some point. So let me call it lambda bar. Say the limit is lambda bar. And the second result is lambda bar satisfies first order necessary condition, which is gradient of x of L, x bar lambda bar equals to zero, h of x bar equals to zero. Okay, so there are two hypotheses here. Here, the first is that XK must converge to some point. And the second hypothesis is that point must be regular. Remember, this is the definition of, this is equivalent to X bar being regular. So X bar is regular if gradient of HX bar is full rank. Okay, so, um, XK converges to a regular point, then the first result says that actually this lambda K plus CK HXK, this converges to some limit. And let me call that limit lambda bar. So it, it's just a convergence sequence. It turns out that this lambda bar has another attractive property, which is it's actually X bar and lambda bar satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality, which means that X bar lies in the manifold HX equal to zero and X bar lambda bar is uh, the, the gradient of the Lagrangian, the original Lagrangian vanishes at X bar comma lambda bar. Any question? We'll, we'll talk about the proof of this result very quickly. I mean, in, in a short while, but uh, does this lead to any algorithm that you can think of? So suppose you know this result, can you cook up an algorithm based on this result? What kind of algorithm can you devise assuming you know this fact? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so no, no thoughts on algorithm. So here is one way to define the algorithm. So I'm going to pick, this is the method of multipliers approach. I'm going to pick CK that goes to infinity. And at every point of time, I start with some X zero lambda zero initial point. Uh, let me tell you what the domain of this initial point is. So this is an Rn cross Rm because lambda naught sits in Rm. So I pick some initial point in Rn cross Rm, the space of the, the domain of the function f itself and the space of Lagrange multipliers. And I define my xk 
equals to argmen L C K X comma lambda K. This X is minimized over R N. And then I update lambda K plus one equals to lambda K plus C K H X K. Okay, so from this step, I move to this step. From this step, I move to this step. This is known as the method of multipliers. Uh, I wrote MOM, but let me just write it. Method of multipliers. Very powerful algorithm. And if you have any quality constraint, um, after doing some math, so of course, all of this is defined for a quality constraint problem. But after you do some math, you can show that the way to update your Lagrange multiplier corresponding to inequality constraint is is as follows. And this max is element wise. Oh, I actually, um, in that case, your augmented Lagrangian would also feature a term with mu k. So in this case, your xk would be argmen x and rn lck lambda k and mu k where this LC is defined as F plus lambda transpose H plus C over two. Well, let me write the whole thing. Okay, so, um, so this is a method of multipliers with equality constraint, and then you have the corresponding method of multipliers with both equality and inequality constraint. That's how you update the Lagrange multipliers for equality constraint, and this is how you update the Lagrange multiplier for inequality constraints. Okay, I'll stop here for questions.
Okay, no questions. All right. So there are no further questions. Let's proceed to proving this particular theorem in the now. So so what do we know? We know two things. A x k converges to x bar. B gradient of h x bar is full rank. And C, gradient of LCK, XK, this is gradient with respect to X, uh, of the Lagrangian, the augmented Lagrangian is zero because XK is the minimum of augmented Lagrangian. Okay, so it must satisfy the first order necessary condition for optimality. And that's all we need in order to prove this result. So let's first look at this term. What is the derivative of augmented Lagrangian? Can someone compute it and tell us what this derivative is? I mean, I, I meant the expression of this derivative. I know the value is equal to zero. Gradient is okay. Mm -hmm. Not the sum of the rows gradient of h of x. Right. Oh, uh, well, there has to be gradient. So actually it needs to be written in this fashion. Okay. What else? Okay. Oh. Okay, so this is what we have. And I know this side is zero. Okay. So I so let's see what we know. We know that x k converges to x star, so this term would converge to gradient of f x. Oh, sorry, x bar. So this term converges to gradient of f x bar. This term converges to gradient of h x bar. And c k converges to infinity. This term converges to h x bar. So so how can we conclude that lambda k converges to some value or lambda k plus c k h x k converges to some value? How can we conclude? So we need to conclude that this term converges to something. This lambda k plus c k h x k converges to something. H of x bar must converge to zero. Uh, H of x bar might converge to zero, yes. So this might converge to zero. Only then this term is going to converge, right? So this mm -hmm. term is going to infinity, so that must go to zero. But I need to show the convergence of this, this lambda k term, so this, this, this whole term, not just of the c k h x k part. So let's see how to do it, okay? Um, so I know that this term, gradient of hx bar is full rank, which means that for k sufficiently large, 
this term gradient of hxk is going to be full rank. If I know that this is full rank, I could multiply both sides by the following quantity. So let me define dk to be gradient hxk, gradient hxk transpose inverse. No, I think the transpose is on the first term. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to define this matrix DK. Um, and this DK, of course, converges to some D bar, which will be gradient of HX bar term. And I'm going to pre multiply both sides by dk then what do we get i get zero equals to dk gradient of fxk plus what's the next term What's this term after the plus sign? Lambda k. Lambda k. And what else? Lambda k. Hx k. Right. Lambda k plus ck hxk. So the thing is, when you pre-multiply both sides by dk, of course, the left side is 0, so you retain 0 here. The right side, you have dk multiplied by gradient of fxk, which is fine. Uh, this term gets annihilated because of this term. So you have gradient h transpose gradient h inverse. This is gradient h transpose that gets multiplied by gradient h. So that inverse multiplied by the matrix itself becomes identity. And so what we get is lambda k plus ck hxk. And the reason why this operation is possible pre-multiplying by dk both sides is possible is because the gradient of hxk hx bar is full rank so gradient of hxk must be full rank for k sufficiently large okay so that's why we can do this um, do this operation and so this implies that my lambda k plus ck hxk is equal to minus dk gradient fxk which converges to d bar gradient fx bar as k goes to infinity. That's the result we wanted. I'm going to call this lambda bar. So d bar gradient of fx bar is my lambda bar. So it will be both the D bar or negative D bar? Uh, oh yeah, sorry, negative D bar, that's right, thanks. Yes, there should be a negative sign here. Okay. Professor, can the term TK H of XK would be zero? Sorry, this term? Uh, no, uh, CK plus uh, multiplied by uh, H of XK would be zero? Yes, so of course this has to, so this term converges to something. So we know, so, okay, so that's a good point. So lambda K plus CK, HXK converges to lambda bar. Okay, and CK goes to infinity. So this term must go to zero. 
right? So this implies that h of x bar must be equal to zero. We couldn't have concluded that hxk goes to zero if we didn't have this entire sequence converging to lambda bar. So that's the crucial point here. <clears throat> that the sum of two sequence converges to a point and this multiplier is going to infinity. So the second term must be going to zero. Otherwise there's no way it can, this, this sum of these two terms can converge to something finite. Of course, we are also assuming here that lambda k is bounded. So we are not picking lambda k, which is escaping to infinity. So that's also, that was part of our description of augmented Lagrangian method that lambda k is bounded. <clears throat> okay, so that gives me the first result, which is this term converges to lambda bar. Now we can substitute this back in here. Uh, so we have this, let me use a different color, gradient of x LCK XK lambda K equals to So this is zero this term converges to gradient of fx bar. This term converges to gradient of hx bar. This term converges to lambda bar. So this satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality and of course, h of x bar is equal to zero. So we arrive at all the conclusions uh, for that theorem. Okay, any questions? Hi, uh, hi Prof, I have a question. Yes. So uh, how do you know at K it converge? Oh, that's the hypothesis of the theorem itself, right? So let's go look at the theorem. So if xk converges to x bar and hx bar, gradient of hx bar is full rank. So these two are hypothesis of the theorem itself. We don't know in the real implementation whether it will converge or not, but suppose it converges, then you are at the first order necessary condition. Okay. Okay. So I actually have quite a bit of experience implementing method of multipliers. And in one of the situations, when I was implementing method of multipliers for an optimization problem, I found that this lambda k sequence is going to infinity. When would it be going to infinity? When would lambda k go to infinity? What would happen? So suppose you're observing your optimization algorithm and you see that your algorithm is not converging, of course, but you also observe that lambda k is going to infinity. What may have gone wrong in the description of the problem itself that lambda k is diverging? Anyone has any thoughts? Sorry? H diverges. Uh, H diverges. Why would H diverge? If H is non-zero. H is non-zero. Uh, you are so close, I... but you are not there yet. Uh, so remember, H is a function, right? So I can, I can. I mean, this is the problem, right? F x such that H x equals to zero. I can define any H I want, like uh, doesn't necessarily have to be non-zero. I mean, it could be non-zero at other points in the space. 
but the function h is up to me to define. So I'll tell you what happened at that time. Turns out my there was no feasible point in the space. So my constraints were so stringent that that there was no point in the space that met all the constraints I had in my optimization problem, which is why the Lagrange, the method of multipliers was blowing up. So I had to modify the constraints a little bit um, so as to make sure that there is at least one point in the space that satisfies the constraint. <clears throat> so, so that was the problem. That was the reason why we weren't able to solve the problem at that time. So it took me quite some time. It took me almost a day to, um, to troubleshoot this issue. And I was just uh, not able to understand why this algorithm is not converging. And after a lot of thinking and debugging, we realized that the constraints were infeasible. So anyway, that was a fun story. I just saved your one day if you encounter this situation ever in your life. So let's look at this uh, uh, a, an example where I can where we can see how this uh, method of multiplier works. So let's say I want to minimize half minus x1 square plus x2 square such that x1 is equal to 1. So so my h of x is actually x1 minus 1. <clears throat> this is my f of x. What's the optimal solution to this problem? One zero. Cool. So the optimal solution is one zero because x one is required to be one and x two square has a positive coefficient, so x two square must x two must be zero. Uh, let's look at the augmented Lagrangian L C X lambda. That is given by half. Okay, so the objective function seems to be non-convex here, right? So you have minus x1 square, so the objective function is non-convex. Uh, so this term is non-convex. What about this term? What about the augmented Lagrangian? When will it be convex? C larger than one. C larger than one. Are you sure? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Actually, you're right. C greater than one means that this augmented Lagrangian will be convex. Okay, so LC is convex when C is greater than one. And that's what the term, the C over two norm of HX square, that's what it does. It sort of convexifies the augmented Lagrangian uh, without necessarily um, affecting the optimization problem at hand. Okay, so let's assume that C is greater than one. So then my augmented Lagrangian is a convex function for every value of lambda. Uh, I hope everyone is able to see why C with c greater than one, this would be a convex function. So you can just expand this term x minus one, x one minus one square, and you can collect all the terms together and you can readily check that for c greater than one, LC will become convex. 
So let's, uh, so I want to find the argument of LC. Uh, so let's, let's write the gradient of LC of X comma Lambda. Uh, what is this equal to? So minus X one plus X two. Oh, no, sorry. So first I have to take the derivative with respect to X one. So I have minus X one plus lambda plus C X one minus one. And then I have to take derivative with respect to X two. So I have X two here and I can set it equal to zero for computing the optimal solution. Uh, I don't want to use X star because later on I want to run the iteration. So anyways, let's, uh, so we know, uh, we know that in order to compute the argument of LC, I just need to set this equal to zero and get the value of X1 and X2. So argument LC X lambda X and R2 is given by, what is this equal to one minus lambda over C minus one and zero. <clears throat> no, it's not one minus lambda, it's C minus lambda. I have to give it a name. Let me give it a name to be X bar. No, X bar is also used. Uh, X star is the optimal solution. X bar is used. X tilde, let me use X tilde. Okay. Now I want to compute lambda plus h x tilde. So this is lambda plus, no, lambda plus c h x tilde. So lambda plus c h x tilde is c minus lambda over c minus one minus one. What does this turn out to be? Okay, let me just write it here. It's equal to minus one over C minus one lambda plus C over C minus one. Okay, so this is we have computed the argument of the augmented Lagrangian for a fixed value of C and Lambda. And assuming that C is strictly greater than one. And the other thing we have computed is, is how would Lambda change at the next iteration? So now I'm ready to write what the iteration of method of multipliers is going to be. But at this point of time, I'm going to pause for questions. Are there any questions in the derivation so far for this example? Okay, so let's, let's go back to what we are doing. So we have this objective function that, that we want to, uh, that we want to solve, constrained optimization problem that we want to solve. So I constructed the augmented Lagrangian 
I realized that for C greater than one, the augmented Lagrangian would be convex. Then I wanted to compute the argument of the augmented Lagrangian, assuming it's, uh, it has a unique solution. And then I wanted to compute the lambda plus CHX tilde um, and get some iteration, understand how lambda would get updated in one iteration. Now I can start from some lambda naught. So this is the method of multipliers. So I start with lambda zero. I have only one equality constraint, so lambda naught must be in real line. And I have my x naught equals to c minus. So let's consider, let's fix c. So let's try to cheat a little bit. And instead of taking ck going to infinity, let's just pick ck equals to c, which is uh, uh, which is greater than one for sure, but it needs to be greater than something else for all the iterations to work. Okay, so let's figure out what happens, how much larger C needs to be in order to converge for this algorithm. So X naught is C minus lambda naught over C minus one. And then zero. Let me just write XK. And lambda k plus one is going to be minus one over c minus one, lambda k plus c over c minus one. <clears throat> right, so from xk, from computation of xk, I go to lambda k. And from lambda k, I go to compute xk plus one and I continue this iteration, okay? The cool thing here that you may be observing is actually lambda k is written, lambda k plus one is written purely in terms of lambda k. So when does this iteration for lambda k converges? So I have two questions. When would, under what conditions on the value of C would lambda K iteration converge? And what happens when I take CK going to infinity? CK going to infinity, lambda infinity would be equal to one. Uh, okay. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think, so if C goes to infinity, this lambda K plus one will converge to one, that's right. Uh, what happens, uh, under what conditions is this iteration going to converge? C greater than equal to one, okay. No, Can you write it in the chat window? There's quite a bit of noise. C greater than one. Uh, so let's, let's, let's see what happens when C is greater than one, okay? I have lambda, k, so let's say C equals to 1.1. So I have lambda K plus one equals to minus 10, lambda K plus uh, 1.1 over 0 0.1, so that's 11. Is this iteration going to converge? See the scaling factor here, it's minus 10. Is this iteration going to converge? No, right, so what's the property? What, under what conditions would the iterations convert? So, 
someone should be able to answer this question. To C greater than two. C greater than two. Okay, so let's see what happens when C is greater than two. I have lambda k plus one equals to. Let me pick C equals to two point one. So then I have lambda k plus one equals to minus one over one point one lambda k plus two point one over one point one. So now this term is actually strictly less than one. I mean the absolute value of the coefficient of lambda k is strictly less than one. So yes, in this case it's going to converge to some value lambda bar. Okay. So that's what I meant that c needs to be greater than two. In order for this method of multiplier um, iteration to converge, and if you let ck go to infinity, this method will converge much faster, because at every point of time you are multiplying lambda k by a by a very very small number, and then you are updating uh, lambda k accordingly. So therefore, the convergence will be much faster if ck goes to infinity. So let me write. What we have just concluded. The first conclusion is c greater than two implies method of multiplier converges. C k goes to infinity implies method of multiplier converges very fast. Okay, so these are the two conclusions we just <coughs> arrived at. Okay, and the other thing I want to notice is the third thing I want to notice is c greater than one implies LC is convex. C greater than two implies method of multiplier converges. So it turns out that in order for method of multiplier to converge, the C has to be twice the size of C required for making LC convex. Okay, so C must be greater than two C bar, where C bar for MOM to converge, where LC bar is, or where C bar is minimum C for which LC is convex. I shouldn't use minimum C, it should be infimum of C, but, but that's fine. I think you get the idea. Your C has to be sufficiently large, but how large for MOM to converge? Well, it has to be twice as large as the minimum C required for making LC convex. This is one of the crucial properties of method of multipliers that you should remember. Okay. And as I have mentioned, uh, if your problem is not feasible, uh, there is no way on earth your, your method of multiplier will converge because you don't have a feasible solution. And no matter how small or large C you pick, uh, your lambda K will always go to plus infinity or minus infinity. Okay, so if you see your method of multiplier diverging, it could be because your C is small but it's likely going to be because assuming your C is sufficiently large, you pick C equals to 10 or 1000 or 100 or depending on the application. Assuming C is sufficiently large, it could be primarily because um, uh, because your, your constraints, there is no point that satisfies all the constraints. So you may need to change the constraints in order to come up with a feasible optimization problem. Okay. 
So is, is the dynamics clear for method of multipliers? Now, the, the other question I would have is what's the, uh, what's the value to which it will converge? Okay, so let's see what the, what the point at which it's going to converge is going to be. So let's write lambda k plus one equals to minus one over c minus one lambda k plus c over c minus one. So assuming that this converges to lambda bar, I will have lambda bar equals to minus one over c minus one lambda bar plus c over c minus one. What does this imply? C over c minus one lambda bar equals to c over c minus one. So this is This implies lambda bar is equal to one. And then my xk was c minus lambda k over c minus one zero. This would converge to one zero, which is equal to x star. Okay, it will also turn out that this is equal to lambda star, which is the corresponding Lagrange multiplier for the original problem. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so let's, uh, we have like three minutes. So let me summarize what we did today. So <clears throat> we had talked about the method of uh, the augmented Lagrangian method, but we didn't quite know how to update the value of lambda k in the augmented Lagrangian method. So we came across this particular theorem which says that if xk converges and gradient of hx bar is full rank, then this lambda k plus c k h x k converges to some limit which satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. So we thought it's a cool result. Uh, why don't we use this as an update scheme for lambda k? Okay, so we came up with this algorithm called method of multipliers where x k is the argument of the augmented Lagrangian and lambda k plus one is updated according to this particular expression. If you have inequality constraint, then your augmented Lagrangian has to be defined appropriately and your mu k plus one has to be updated in a similar fashion. So now we went ahead and of course proved this theorem, which was not very complicated. And then we tried to study this non-convex problem. So it's important to remember that this is a non-convex problem, but all points in the constraint sets are like, constraint set is regular and we know what the optimal solution is going to be. So we constructed the augmented Lagrangian. We found that if C is greater than one, then the augmented Lagrangian is convex. Uh, we came up with the iteration for method of multipliers to only to realize that actually for method of multipliers to converge, I need C to be greater than two, which is twice what we needed for making augmented Lagrangian convex, okay? Um, which is a very crucial property of uh, this method of multiplier scheme. Uh, it also turns out that actually I don't need to take CK going to infinity. I can just fix C to be some positive number, which is sufficiently large. In this case, anything larger than two would work. And we know that this iteration method of multipliers will converge to the optimal solution pretty quickly. And we made three remarks about this method of multipliers. One is if C is greater than two, then method of multiplier converges. If CK goes to infinity, so you're picking a CK which actually escapes to infinity. 
then the method of multiplier will converge very, very fast. Okay, so that's the benefit of taking CK going to infinity. Um, and then we, of course, uh, remarked about how C needs to be larger two times. C has to be at least two times what it takes to make the augmented Lagrangian convex. So those are all the things we talked about today. If you have any questions, uh, I can hang around for a bit to answer them. Uh, if you have no further questions, I'll either see you on my Thursday office hours or next Monday. Um, so good luck with your exam, your midterm exam on, on Friday. There is no class on Friday, so keep that in mind. Questions? Uh, professor. Yes. So this lambda bar is always lambda star. Uh, so whatever it converges to should be equal to lambda star. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so you see this lamp, it converges to lambda bar and lambda bar satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. And you know from your experience, first order necessary condition means nothing. You have to check for sufficient conditions to ascertain whether it's an optimal point or not, right? So doesn't say anything about sufficient condition here, okay? Uh, so, 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 so your conclusion is uh, this lambda bar is a lambda star or, or, or maybe not? Uh, so this lambda bar satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. So what do you mean by lambda star? So if you mean lambda star that satisfies sufficient condition, no, it's not. Uh, if you mean lambda star that satisfies just first order necessary condition for optimality, then it is. But, but so you just said that uh, when CK is large enough, this will be convex, so. So it, so yes, it converges to so you're talking about this specific example or are you talking about in general? I remember you said that in general case when CK is larger enough, this will be become a con yes, convex so problem. So this lambda star, lambda bar will also satisfy sufficient. The necessary condition. condition. All I'm saying is it satisfies this condition, first order necessary condition. Does that answer your question? I have so, not but, said anything about sufficient condition, okay? Okay, thank you All so I'm much. saying is in order to ascertain whether you are at the optimal solution or not, you have to check for sufficient condition. But all the algorithms we are studying for optimization will converge to a point that satisfies necessary condition for optimality. Unless your function is convex and your constraint sets are linear or, or convex functions. So, 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 but here you said this CK goes to infinity, so this function will be a convex function. So, so if it satisfy F, O, N, C, does it mean it also satisfy sufficient conditions? No, the no, it okay, does thank not. Okay, thank you so much. No, it does not, yeah. So convexity of LC, convexity of LC has nothing to do with sufficient condition for optimality. So let, let's, actually it's an important point. So I want to, uh, so what is the sufficient conditions for optimality? So if you remember, they were, x bar lambda bar equals to zero, h of x bar equals to zero, half d, sorry, d transpose greater than zero for all d in v x bar, d not equal to zero. Okay, so this was the sufficient condition for optimality. So the augmented Lagrangian doesn't feature anywhere here. Okay. 
okay all right so i'll see you guys on on tomorrow's office hours then